some stories of uh, Rose Tattoo. Rose Tattoo? One of the greatest rock and roll bands ever. Um, when you think about it, I'm glad they were never as successful as uh, ACDC because everyone would have heard it and everyone's by this stage I suppose in life they're going to be sick of them but I'm never sick of them. I put on their records once every three or four months and I just re they reduce me to tears. I, I, I love uh, that band. The initial stages of Rose Tattoo were for me when I first went to Sydney um, in 80 to, to, to to start the Young Lions, I was walking up through the cross and and, 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 and I run into that Ian Ryland who's recently died uh, and he was washing his Pontiac Star Chief and he had soap studs everywhere and, he, and, and he, I didn't even know who he was and I walked up to him and he said, ah, oh, I was in Rose Tattoo and he showed me his, his, um, his tattoo on his finger, Ian Ryland. And his wife and him, she had a little keyboard and they were in this little terraced house and they invited Jeffrey and I in off the street. And we, we had flat top, short hair and we looked like um, in a squeaky clean from Queensland. And he was showing us these songs, Touch Telephone, I Need It, and all these early songs that were on, on his sardine, in his sardine band. And he invited us to the show that night, but um, when I found out he'd written a lot of the earlier Rose Tattoo songs, Bad Boy for Love, so he told us, and uh, Rock and Roll Outlaw and that, he was the real deal. And through him I met, um, I went on to meet the other guys, Angry, whom I love, uh, one of the greatest rock and roll voices ever, Angry Anderson, absolutely. Him and Bon Scott, no one ever has come close to them. Uh, in that 